world champion for the last two years. The last time she was beaten was right here by Radionova in the Ross Telecom Cup. Since then, she's been a country mile better than anyone else. Double world champion, double European champion, Evgenia Medvedeva. Music from Anna Karenina. Flip and toe. Consummate. Trademark in hands. It's her least favourite triple. Often there's a question on the edge in the takeoff, so we'll see what happens at the end of the programme. allow the judges to give her the big marks and the skating skills. Sarko, triple toe loop. And that just about seals the deal. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a double tick. And she's she's laughing, it's yeah. Such a rarity. The easiest jumping element that she has in the program she goes down on. smiling for once it wasn't flawless but she knows she was so far in front and so much better than any of the others still costing to come but her marks are not going to threaten that Nedvedeva wins the Ross Telecom 
Cup. And it was uh, quite an event when she fell on the double axle. Yeah, it took, took us all by surprise that you could hear a collective gasp from the Russian fans that have come here to support her. You know, Simon, there's been some, um, there's been some criticism. Oh, she, I think she wants to do a double axle again just to show that she can do it. Um, some slight criticism from some skating pundits about the construction of her program because... Uh, it's very similar to last year. It is very similar and she tends, she has all these jumping passes and they tend to be um, with a highlight before and she does quite often a change edge and a back counter afterwards. Um, but the reason behind that, she and her coaching team at Terry took, but it's a Sergei Dudikov, have, have constructed programs that they know are guaranteed to get good degree of execution on the elements. The armor loft, you said it's a trademark, and it shows such great physical strength, but it also is something that the judges have in their criteria to give more points. And so while some complain, oh, she always has her armor above her head, or she always does these similar transitions when they come out, they've really studied this system, and they know how to accrue the absolute most points, and that's why she's the world record holder by a 10 point margin. Her score, her world record for the free skate at 160, is 10 points clear of the next best, which was Yuna Kim at 150, and she doesn't even compete anymore. And that's down to this, the way I think that they've studied the system, not only producing great quality and technique, but in constructing programs that have the goods to give the judges the chance to give her those big scores. They are dramatic, melodramatic sometimes. Sometimes the facial expressions look a little bit over the top and a bit contrived perhaps and and that's something that if the judges are <laughs> if the judges are really screwing it'll be interesting to put this back to back to Karina Costner who's a 30 year old with so much more life experience who potentially could interpret with more life experience to give more emotion to the performance some might say that it's a little contrived because how can you know 17 18 year olds um, emote and portray when they're so young but we're nitpicking on we perfection. Are, we really, really are, and I have nothing but the greatest admiration for her and particularly the, the team behind her. She's still laughing about the mistake. Very good score. 150.46. That's way out of reach of anybody else skating in the world at the moment. There's only she that has better that, and Yuna Kim that has better that score ever in this year's Ladies Figure Skating so far. So, so there's still Kostner to go, and we hope she's glorious, but she's not going to beat that score. 231. So she's at the moment 24 points clear of